hello to everyone. I'm really glad to be here, and it's amazing to see so many people in Torino listening to our talk. Today, today I'm going to talk about memories and technology. I want to start, I'm going to talk also about augmented reality. I'm going to start, uh, I selected one um, one paragraph from Marcel Proust's uh, Swan's Way that really has huge meaning for me and for the things that I'm going to talk about. On that paragraph, Proust describes that eating the Madeleine, he recalled in his mind last memories about his childhood. Technically, the recall of the past is called reminiscence. So the way of recalling in my mind my own personal past memories due to an action that is connected to something that is physical to the world or to the things that I have in my surroundings. But <clears throat> from the past to now, things change slightly because today we live in a connected world. Everything can be digital. So what's happening today is that everyone is able to publish in a live streaming his own mood, his own feelings, his own ideas. And the huge difference is that the reminiscence, the digital reminiscence actually is available to everyone. It's not just connected to me when I'm eating a biscuit. I'm going to share my feelings and going to be public. That has an impact <clears throat> on the urban spaces and on the physical object that we are connected with every single day. Because if you think carefully, every single object that we have around has digital layers stitched to it. A single box of tomatoes, actually, is connected to pictures, Twitter, Facebook, information that everyone, every single moment in the world is connected to something that apparently doesn't have anything to fit with it. We have huge amount of information available every single time through our devices or through our website, web internet connection. This is called multi-layered events. I would like to change the slides. But which is the problem, actually? That we have too many informations. So if all information are not connected to each other, or actually it's not so easy to get the proper information at the time that I need it, or when in front of the things that I'm looking at. Because I don't know where to get the sources. I don't have the device proper, properly set. I don't know how to get the real information. I want to talk with an example, tourism. The way that we experience tourism today is totally different from 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Because in the past, we had a habit to go in a place and to walk in the city with a book in our hand. And mainly the tourism in the past was based on historical information. Today, the way that we live the, the tourism is connected to a lot of more information. We are looking for historic, historical information, but we are also interested in social information, what happened in that place is in the past. But at the same time, we want to have tourists connected to food, or we want to have tourism connected to arts or to social events. We want to have tourists also connected to the sentiment that has been lived in the same place, but not famous people, but people that are exactly like me, that were in the same place few hours, few days ago. This is called experiencing tourism. So everything that is connected to a real experience of leaving a city, of getting the soul of a place, and of getting the mood of the place today and in the past. If you look at the numbers, we see that today 64% of the tourists uses, use 
social network where they are in the place. So they tweet and they share information. But at the same time, most of the people trust the suggestion by their own friends. So they trust less the printed uh, guides, the touristical printed guide. They trust most what your friend says or what other people you don't even know says based on the references, based on, on, on the sources that you, you're going to get that information from. And of course, everyone or most of the people that travel has in on, on pocket a smartphone. And what they have habit is to take out the phone and to take pictures. So it is a common gesture that we do every single day, several times, connected to the tourists, but connected for everything. How many people take pictures of the food? How many people take pictures of the, of the boxes? How many people take pictures of people at the end? And they publish, they share, they teach information, social information, personal information, feelings, and sentiment. The point is, a lot of information, how to get the proper information when I need them in the way that I want to have them. So which taste of the information I want to get in a specific time. I can change the taste every single time, but at a certain moment I want to point at the building and get just few information in a very niche market, niche segment of that information. We think, I think that augmented reality is a good way to make that process smoother. Augmented reality is the technology that allows you to do two simple things. The first one is to recognize something that is in front of you. The second thing is to stitch or to blend digital content over what you're looking at. The media that you're going to use is actual, your actual smartphone. So you're going to see through your smartphone. Using augmented reality, pointing at a building, you're going to be able to get the proper information that you want with the tone of voice that you want. And at the same time, you can aggregate the multiple sources, just giving you the pieces information that you want. And you can also get the sentiment of the people that spend time in front of the same building. What about knowing what the people talk about love in front of the Tour Eiffel in the last 100 years? There are going to be people that are going to love that. How many pictures about kisses? How many pictures about social events? What happened in the past in front of Palazzo Carignano in Torino in the last 100 years? What about to see exactly where that happened? What about the storytelling about the social event, the politics in a time story that can go behind? And how to get that information? Just pointing the device to what you're looking at and getting in a few milliseconds the proper information with the tone of voice that you're actually looking at. A couple of months ago, I was in Brussels for the first time with my children because we went to, to visit his friend left Torino. And actually, I didn't have any touristical guides. I was walking with him just to make a short touristical guides. And I said, well, if I could have something on my device that just pointing at the building, I can tell him the short piece of information that my children can see as nice, funny, and with the proper tone of voice, I'm going to make him happy. And I'm going to make also my trip with him really much easier because I didn't know anything about Brussels at the moment. I strongly believe that technology should make the life easier. So high technology, the goal of the technology should be to make the daily life much more easier. And augmented reality, we believe, that can make it smoother to get the proper information just on time and proximity of what you're looking at. And by the way, it is a self-learning system because every single day, a lot of people are going to publish information connecting to what I'm looking at. The point is just to aggregate them, to, use the, to make the proper usage of the big data and to distill the small information that every single person is going to search in that time. But of course, it is huge market opportunity at the same time because we are talking about buildings, but we can talk as well about products. What about having a box of pasta 
and getting the recipe every single day that can be cross sources at the end. I'm going to have the recipe for my penne of pasta, or I can have a user manual just pointing at the washing machine. And of course, the last thing is everyone can publish his own piece of knowledge. So everyone can be the real contributor to the knowledge and to make the access to the information, the proper information, smoother, easier, faster, and available. Thank you.